What is up you guys and welcome back to another video. If you guys are new, my name is Ja, that's J-I, and we are back with Mr. Nightmare. Three true sleepover stories. Another one. Another one. Uh, I hope it's not too scary. I hope it's not too rough. Probably typical thing. Creepy guy is creeping. Or someone's in the house. Something like that. But let's see... But don't speak too soon, Jai. Let's see what we expect. So sit back, relax, get your snacks and all that great stuff, and let's get into it. And positive vibes, by the way. Positive vibes. Ages ago, when I was a boy, one of my favorite Ages things ago. would be to have sleepovers with my friends, especially my friend Joe. Joe had the coolest house layout. It was big and it had this huge basement with a pool table, air hockey table, and the entire basement looped around in a big circle. And we'd often ride his scooters around the loop in the basement while on our sugar rushes after hours of playing video games and eating junk food. Mm. The best part was his parents could never hear us down there as they slept all the way upstairs. He said all I'll the way. forget the night that my mom dropped me off at Joe's house after dinner. It was a night before a holiday, so we didn't have school the next day. Joe and I went straight to the basement and started playing one of his new video games on his PlayStation 1. When suddenly, the door to the laundry room in the back creaked open. Uh-oh. We paused the game and turned around to look. And yes, they the, the door, door was now cracked open. I told Joe to go check it out. He said it's fine, it happens sometimes. To be honest, though, sometimes at night... I don't check it out, you check it out. Joe and I would get spooked. I told him to go shut the door because something about having that door open leading into a big pitch black laundry room was uncomfortable. Ugh. I think he agreed because he got up to close it. After a while of playing video games, I started riding Joe's bike around the loop of the basement, which honestly was a lot more fun than it sounds. But then something else happened. There was a noise, almost like the sound of a laundry machine door being banged or closed. It came from the laundry room again, obviously. Oh my. This time, Joe and I ran up the stairs, freaked out, and Joe called his dad to come check the laundry room. His dad opened the door to the laundry room, had a quick five-second look, and calmly said there's no one in there. So he went back upstairs to bed, and Joe and I continued to hang out for another hour or two. Then it came time to go to sleep. There were two couches down there, one in front of the TV, and then another towards the back of the basement by the bar. Someone's hiding. I slept on the couch towards the back of the basement. I didn't sleep long, though. I woke up, and it was still pitch black in the basement. No light shining through the small basement windows. It was still the middle of the night. I rubbed my eyes and sat up after getting this weird feeling of being watched. Joe? I said. Just checking if he was awake. After saying his name, I heard and saw something moving in the darkness to the laundry room. Then the door creaked shut. I jumped off the couch to wake up Joe. But when I got to his couch, he wasn't there. That's when I became wise to what was going on. Joe was trying to scare me. I tiptoed to the door of the laundry room. I figured I would reverse it on him and scare him uh -oh. instead. I put my hand on the doorknob. And after a little mental buildup, I yanked the door open and went inside screaming. I turned on the light to the room, but Someone's Joe wasn't watch, in right? there. Where could he be hiding? That's a nice watch and dry, by the way. In that moment, I was beyond confused. I knew nice he had to be in the room. Then I noticed something through the glass of the dryer machine. There I walked go. over to it and knelt down. Someone was inside. Someone was in the dryer machine, crunched up and like a ball. You know how dryer machine doors usually have a sort of tinted glass that's hard to see through? Well, while I knew there was a person in there, it took me a few seconds to catch Friday, up. But up. The person that was in the dryer machine looking back at me was not Joe. It was some grown what? man. I started screaming and ran all the Lock way upstairs it and to Joe's start parents. the dryer. That's what I would do. Everyone in the house came out from their bedrooms in response, including Joe. Joe apparently was having a hard time falling asleep on the couch, so he went upstairs to his bedroom. I yelled there was someone hiding in the dryer machine. As Joe's dad started his way storming to the basement, Somebody ran through the living room and out the front door. 
Joe's mom let out a scream as his dad ran outside in his slippers to try to catch the man. Of course, being that he was only in slippers, he didn't have a chance. When he came back, Joe's mom had already called the cops. When the cops came, they asked me if there was anything specific that I could make out about the man. All I could say was that he was wearing dark clothes. What purpose was this? Joe and I slept in his room. I slept on the floor with a blanket and we kept the door locked. We took a break from the sleepovers for a while after that. What purpose? Please tell me. Please tell me. This happened quite some time ago. In fact, it happened back in July 2013. It was my 13th birthday party, and my uh -oh. friends and I had been to Manchester for the day, before heading back to my house for a sleepover. A couple of them had stayed over before, but some hadn't, so I wanted to make a good impression. We all decided to sleep downstairs that night, as there wasn't enough room in my bedroom. We gathered our sleeping bags on the living room floor, watched cheesy rom-coms, and ate junk food until around 1 a.m. So we decided to hit the sack after our third movie. We turned off the lights with the exception of one, as although we didn't like to admit it then, we were a little afraid of the dark. It's a common thing to lie awake and chat at a sleepover after you say you're going to sleep. We were in the middle of whispering to each other who we thought our celebrity lookalikes were. When we heard it, a loud knock on our window cut through our conversation. What was that? said Emma, one of my friends. Oh my god. It's probably just my dad playing a prank or something, I said. Although this whole situation was kind of freaking me out. My her dad, dad had done this type of thing before. Her dad so was I assumed it must have been him. We were beginning to calm down when suddenly another forceful knock came upon the window. Boop, boop, boop. This made some of my friends <coughs> scream. I assured everyone that, like I said, it was probably just my dad being goofy. So I went over to the window to catch him red-handed. The curtains were closed, so I had to pull a section of them back to see who was outside. As I did, I came face to face with a man who was most certainly not my dad. This man was bald, see? with very thin eyebrows, and he had a missing tooth. Ugh. He was sort of hunched over. Eyebrows he looked at me with widened, glassy eyes. And I now immediately please. screamed and closed the curtain. At this point, my friends and I were pretty hysterical, and Emma began visibly shaking in fear. My parents were upstairs, so instinctively, I ran up to find them. As I got upstairs, my mom was talking to someone from her window. I oh. didn't quite catch their conversation, but she told me what happened soon after. She said that she heard the knocking too, and when she looked out of her window to see who it was, the man looked up and asked her if she had seen a friend of his. I can't remember the name of the guy she said she was looking for, so we'll call him Paul. He kept asking for him over Boy, and over. Boy, are you crazy? Have you seen Paul? Where is Paul? Has Paul been here? Of course, my mom said she didn't know anyone named Paul. Eventually, she had to ask him to leave us alone, as he just kept wandering around our driveway. As the man finally left, I went back downstairs to calm my friends down. In retrospect, I feel bad for leaving them alone down there when some weird stranger was on our property. We all settled back down after that. However, my mom's maternal instincts kicked in, so she wanted to make sure he was gone completely. She left briefly to go around the block in her car to make sure he wasn't still in the area. The street oh, wow. was dimly lit by impractical streetlights, so she had to put her high beams on. As she was driving, she saw someone dash across the middle of the road. Thinking it was just a kid, she just Ram. kept driving. Until the man who was at our window appeared again. But this time, he practically jumped in front of my mom's car. My mom quickly slammed on the brakes, but before she could confront him, he disappeared off into the night. We never found out who that guy was, or what his true intentions were. Is he black? What is he? Thankfully, we never saw him. It doesn't matter what race he is, but... So much for wanting to make a good impression. Yeah. Jake slept over my house one night when we were 12. Looked a pretty little light. Because of that, he may have possibly saved my life. It was a snowy weekend night. We watched a couple Christmas movies in my living room. Perfect. My mom would bring us snacks and hot cocoa. Mm -hmm. She was always really nice to my friends when I had them over. My mom had to go to sleep kind of early because she worked. She and my dad had just recently divorced. 
By around 12, Jake and I went to my room, where we played Pokemon on our Game Boy Advances for a little. I don't remember much after that, besides falling asleep a little while later. I woke up in my bed to the room being extremely cold, and also feeling really thirsty. A ghost? I went to the kitchen downstairs to get a cup of water. I noticed how much colder it had become upstairs as opposed to downstairs. I went back to my bed and tucked myself in. As I lay there trying to fall back asleep, I realized Jake was breathing weird, like a deeper, heavier breathing. It went on for some time, and after making a note of it in my head, it was all I could focus on. So I eventually threw a pillow at him. As he woke up, I told him to stop breathing so loud. He was confused as he looked up at me in my bed. He said, what are you talking about? I told him to just lower the volume of his breathing noises as he was borderline snoring. Jake shifted his focus from me to down below my bed, and then he screamed. He crawled backwards until his back was pushing up against oh, my dresser. He screamed. He yelled, what is it? I hopped off my bed and looked under it where he was staring at. There was a middle-aged man with long hair laying underneath my bed. He had oh, his finger up to his no. Shh. Hell to the no. It was a surreal sight, to say the least. I felt like my heart was beating 200 beats per minute. Look at his hair. What the? The man whispered, I know your mom. I'm here to see her. He started crawling out from under the bed. Gash that his eyes Jake and I out ran from right the room, now. Screaming for my mom. Grab we something. Got to my mom's room and locked her bedroom door behind us. She was immediately distressed and confused by our screams. I barely had enough time to yell, there's a man under my bed, before the doorknob to my mom's room started twisting and shaking. Oh. Then the sounds of the doorknob failing to turn shifted to heavy, aggressive bangs on the door. My mom ran to her phone and called 911. She was on the phone already in tears, while also screaming at the man on the other side of the door to leave us alone. The man tried kicking the door in, I think when he heard my mom on the phone, he left the house. We were all in shock. It took Delusion. the police only a couple Delusion. minutes to arrive, at which point the coast was clear. The biggest window in our house, which was the window to the upstairs spare bedroom, and the was lifted time up completely, of the year. which explained the cool air entering the house upstairs. That also explained the man's point of entry. I told my mom that man claimed he knew her, but she had no idea who this man could have been. A stalker? My mom dropped Jake off home, and then she and I slept at my aunt and uncle's house for the rest of the night. The mm. next day, my uncle installed a stronger lock on that upstairs window. This was like 16 years ago now. At this point, it's oh. just a distant, haunting memory. It was a while ago. We never figured out who that man could have Is that been. that they were house? Or how he could have possibly known my mother. Um, yeah, it wouldn't be me. If you have a big house, make sure you got every camera, everything that you can use to your advantage throughout the house. No, no. Them coming to my house uninvited. I'm trying to relax. I'm trying to have a nice sleepover. We hide in the laundry rooms, under beds. It's just too much. It's just too much. People are crazy. People are crazy. So thank you guys for tuning into this video. Tell me guys what you think. And like, comment, subscribe, all the great stuff. And it's your life. Do what you want. And do it positively. Peace. Love you guys.